Again, well, when it comes to your child's health, it's always best to trust your gut. If you think something is wrong, tell your doctor about it and keep asking questions and insisting on getting answers. Our next guests know the importance of that all too well. Their insistence on answers led to a shocking diagnosis for their six year old son. And right now they're joining us. Uh, this is the Theodore, uh, the Daybon family, I should say. Of course, we have Theo Daybon Sr., Ebony Daybon, uh, of course, Theo Daybon Jr., and Elise Daybon, who is uh, five years old here. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank, Thank you for Thank having, you having us. All right, so let, let's get straight to it. First of all, uh, this story starts, and I saw this story, by the way, on Facebook. I shared it, and of course, it garnered a lot of attention. Um, this story starts last year sometime. Uh, your son just starts complaining of headaches. Correct. Um, around the last of June, maybe uh, going into the summer or going into the fall time, he started complaining of headaches. Um, I don't think he really knew what it was at the time. You know, he would just say, you know, my, it hurts up here. And then my husband explained to him, you know, oh, those are probably headaches. Um, so that's when we started noticing the headaches at that time. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is Theo right here, by the way. Theo, how old are you? Six. Six years old, <laughs> all right. And uh, he, of course, you, again, you said you started noticing that and then he, he was complaining of headaches. Now the doctors you guys went to just thought it was something simple. Yes, right. just migraines. They just kept saying it was migraines. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, that's all. Yeah, and so what, what did you guys do next? Uh, once you, of course, you, the doctors are telling you it's migraines, you should give them uh, medicine for it. Mm -hmm. What made you guys insist on more answers? His headaches kept getting worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so like towards the last week of January, his headaches just got worse and worse. Um, and then he threw up one time. And so I took him to Children's to get, uh, just because he had a headache. Mm -hmm. And so when I got there, I was like, yeah, he need a cash scan. He need a cash scan, he need a cash scan. And so then guys in the back, the doctor was like, uh, he just got a migraine. We'll give you a, seem to a pediatric migraine specialist. And I was just like, uh, that's cool and everything, but he still need a cash scan. And so I just kept sitting on him. He said, we're going to set you up for a cash scan. And when he came back, that's when they found out that he had a mass on his brain and he needed immediate surgery. And I immediately started sweating and called my wife to come <laughs> now, of course, uh, in, in this story, you find out there's a mass on his brain, then you find out he has, I believe, a tumor. Mm -hmm. Correct. So explain uh, what doctors were telling you at this time. Well, <laughs> at that time, you know, they really couldn't tell us much. But, you know, there's a tumor. We, we know that it's going to have to be removed some type of way in order to relieve the uh, pressure and where the fluid was building up at in his head. They had an idea of what it may have been, but they didn't want to, you know, confirm until they could get, you know, more testing done. Um, so we pretty much went into it just, I don't know, bl blindsided, you know? Um, you know, they had to sit down with the surgical team, uh, several times because there was some difference in opinions on how to approach it mm -hmm. um, so and what was the consensus i know you you were saying um <clears throat> he's young obviously and uh i mean this is something that's kind of rare correct um that's what we learned of um that it was you know a rare uh tumor they don't really see it very often at children's hospital at all actually it's a tumor that's very rare uh throughout you know the nation they only have two cases per year in the state of Alabama that's treated at Children's of Alabama. And the tumor name is uh, cranial pharyngioma, and it caused hydrocephalus. That was the fluid that built up on his head. That's what was causing the headaches. So at first they had to relieve the hydrocephalus off his head, and then um, they treated the cranial pharyngioma. And then uh, once they treated it, they wanted to put uh, a reservoir in, but the pathology report came back and said it was another type of tumor that may be cancerous. So that was another whole scare. Yeah. That, that just threw us for a loop. You're talking about a scare, I mean, for mm -hmm. parents. Just tell, I mean, the people how this felt as parents of a six and a five-year-old. I mean, who would have ever imagined? Yeah, it, 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 was, it was very difficult. We, we are very appreciative of our family and friends. We have a very good support system. Uh, but trying to make the right decision for your child is very hard. Um, just making sure that you're going with the right decision. Um, because at the end of the day, your decision counts. That's pretty much, you know, the doctors will guide you, but they still give you that, that leeway to 
you know, kind of also make a decision as well. Um, so that was the most, you know, scariest thing, just trying to make sure we made the right decision for him. And we just, you know, ask parents to be persistent. You know, when your kids are complaining about something, you know, don't brush it off. Um, you know, be persistent with the doctors, you know, uh, follow very up. Quickly, it, where are we now with, with uh, his status and what's next? Well, the tumor, uh, they were able to shrink the uh, tumor down to about 90%. Um, so that that's a, a blessing. Uh, right now, he's just under observation. He does not have to be on any medications at the time. Uh, he does have to go back for MRIs every three to six months, and he would just be monitored. And um, you know, we don't know what's to come for the long run. But right now, it's just observation. Yeah, because cranial fibroma is not cancerous, but can always come back. So you got to monitor that. So this is just something that you guys are kind of going to have to live with, just making sure that he's okay just keeping an eye on him yes correct yeah all right now they are and very quickly as we close out they are raising uh, money for the pediatric brain tumor foundation i believe mm -hmm. it is uh and i forgot to give this to my uh, producer i apologize for that uh, team.curethekids.org slash fundraisers where you can go to donate and of course you can find this information on social media as well thank you guys so much for joining thank us you. we thank are you. certainly uh praying for his recovery thank full recovery you. and then uh thank you just for sharing your story Thank you. of insistence and persistence for your child. Yes, sir. Thank All you right. so much for having us. All right, and Theo, <laughs> can you tell the folks bye? <laughs> He's ready to get to school for the <laughs> Easter <ready>. egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Theo was having a lot of fun. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with more Good Day Alabama.